So friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may it be unto you for now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. These words from uh, the last chapter of the epistle of James. Are any of you suffering hardship? You should pray. Are any of you happy? They should pray or sing praises. Or any of you sick, you should call on the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you well. And if you committed any sins, they'll be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So far, our text. So, friends, we've been working through... Uh, the, God, uh, the, the, the uh, epistle of James, and, and I have to tell you, it's been a hard slug. It's been a hard slug for a bunch of reasons. It, it starts off talking about all kinds of things that we are to do, 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 uh, and, and don't do. Uh, like, it says, okay, uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, you've got to be like the light of the world. If you're a follower of Jesus, you can't be prejudiced against other people or give preferential treatment to other people because of the way they look or the clothes they're wearing. You have to feed the poor and take care of widows and orphans. And if you're not doing it, faith without works is dead. And then you have to keep track of, your, of your, what you say, too, that, that you're tongue is like a rudder on a, on a big ship. A little rudder moves a big ship. Your tongue is like a forest fire, and it just burns everything. And so you got to watch over your tongue and be careful what you say. Then you got to be careful about your attitude. you got to lose your pride, and you have to stop thinking, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this. I'm, I, I, you are a mist, and a mist that the sun burns off, you're just here for a moment. So remember you're here for a moment. And stop acting like you're here for forever. And then make sure that you're using your money in the right way. You know, you can't lift up money as, as being really important, but you got to use money for the proper purposes it, that, that God has given it to you. And it just goes on and on and on. And I have to tell you, every time you hear this, you hear something from the book of James, it just keeps on getting you lower and lower and lower and lower because you see the standard is way up here. And if your life is like mine, well, it kind of wavers up and down here. You know, there are good days, but I'm never, I'm, I'm never up here to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ that God calls me to be. And so James ends up with, a last important thing. And he says, you got to get your head together and you got to remember that, that when you're looking at this and this, the, the gap between here and there, the thing that's going to, to make a change in your life is prayer. I can't begin to tell you how many people say it's useless. They, they appreciate that I pray with them f about things, but they're really not thinking... It's not going to do a whole lot. That's when James confronts us with those opinions. And he says, you remember what happened with the prophet Elijah? Remember what happened? We read about it today. He, he said, I'm going to go up against 450 prophets of Baal on the top of Mount Carmel. And, and he goes to the people around and says, you all have been wavering between two things. Is this God God or is that God God? If my God is God, then you got to get rid of that. But if Baal is God, then you follow him and let's see how this works out for you. And remember those prophets of Baal, they tried everything they could. They, they, they prayed and they were stomping around. It's funny, if you read the Hebrew, it doesn't translate into English this way because they're trying to be kind. But it actually says, um, Elijah over there saying, well, maybe he can't hear you because he's in the potty. Right? He's, he's relieving himself. And he's making fun of them. And finally he says, okay, this is it. Everybody come on over here. I'm going to put up 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Which tribe of Israel are you from? 
Well, one of these 12 tribes of Israel, these stones is for you. Then we're going to put a bull on top of it. Then we're going to dig a hole around it. And we're going to pour buckets and buckets and buckets of water on it. And then I'm going to pray this prayer. And here's the, the, the prayer that, that I want you to concentrate on. Because we know that part of the story. But the prayer that, that Elijah actually said is instructive for us. He, he said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant. Prove that what I have done is at your command. Now, you can start off by thinking, well, he's just trying to justify himself. No, here's his point. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you've brought them back to yourself. That the reason for doing this was not for me to show my guns, my prayer guns, if you will. The reason is, I want you back. I want you back. And I'm going to do something powerful so that you may be brought back. See, God's got a point for prayer. Sometimes what we do is, is we start praying like, like I started playing guitar. When, when I was 10 years old, uh, Pastor Myers, how many of you remember Pastor Bob Myers when he was here? Okay, Bob Myers was my dad's vicar, and he played a pretty mean guitar. And so dad said, why don't you teach my son guitar? He wants to learn. And I have to tell you, I was the most miserable student. I just chose not to learn. I was not going to learn from anybody else. I was going to figure it all out by myself. And so after Pastor Myers walked away in disgust, uh, and it was really hard to make him disgusted because he was a very kind man, uh, but he was a vicar then, you know, so, so he could have a little more disgust. Uh, I decided I was going to learn, start learning on my own. And so I got a book out, and I read about it. And, I, and we didn't have YouTube then, so I couldn't really watch. I saw some pictures, and I learned this, and I watched other people play, and I tried to figure it out and figure it out. And finally, I learned three chords, E, A, and D. And they were easy chords because I could use three fingers and build up the calluses on there. And, oh, my fingers bled, you know, from all that, from all that, practicing and practicing and practicing and I can tell you that 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 I was in heaven when I could sing almost any song with those three chords and my friend gave me an electric guitar and I would tune that puppy up and I would play and play and play and play until my, my parents had their bedroom right above mine because I'd usually play at night when I was really in the mood and I'd hear this And after a while, it was, learn another chord. Because <laughs> all they heard was E, A, and D over and over again. And I could sing all this. I'm, I wonder if my father in heaven is ever gently tapping on us on our shoulders and saying, get your repertoire about prayer bigger. Because I want you to have in mind what I have in mind. Not what you have in mind, what you like to do. Because we all like to pray for our needs, right? And we all like to pray for our family. And we all like to pray for, for protection. And we all like to pray for, and you can fill in the blank. We all like to pray for those things. But what happens is our prayer life gets to be like this. And all of a sudden, instead of praying for the world, all we're doing is praying for ourselves and people we like, right? That's not what Jesus did. In, in, in the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John has this big section in the middle, and it's from about uh, John 13 until about John 20, those seven chapters. Uh, uh, 20, 21 is at 19, so 20 and 21 are, are, are different. But, but that section is basically Monday, Thursday night to Good Friday. One-third of the Gospel of John is about one night. But in that one night, we see an awful lot of the heart 
of God for you and me. And, and, and what he wants us, he desires us to live out in our prayer lives, a prayer life that trusts and prays and seeks the lost. Now, in John 17, the reason why you don't read all of John 17 is because it just get, really gets confusing. Everybody that uh, ever has to read it as a lector, you, you get tongue-tied because it's Jesus talking in his, quote, high priestly prayer about the glory of God. He says, I want, uh, God, I'm coming back to you. I know I'm leaving here, and, and, and I want the same glory that you and I had before the start of the world. You and me and I and you. Now I'm going to add on some disciples. And I want them, the disciples, I'm going to pray for the disciples so that they may have the same joy and unity we have. So you and me and I and you and you and them and me and them and them and me and them and you and me. And it just goes, everyone goes, I can't understand it. They skip over it. But there's a powerful message in this that people just... They miss when they don't read it word for word. And I want you to listen to this from the Gospel of John. This is Jesus. Now think about this. He's, he's about to go in the Garden of Gethsemane and be betrayed and be on trial and go to the cross. And what is he praying for? My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All, all who are mine belong to you, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. Now, I'm departing from the world, and they're staying in this world, but I'm coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now, protect them by the power of your name so that they will be unified just as we are. And you think about that. Well, what did the disciples, the 12 disciples, what were they like on that light, that night? One of them would betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Eleven of them would be asleep when Jesus needed them most. Eleven of them would, would run away one, after he drew his sword and tried the best he could to protect Jesus, like Jesus needed protection. Remember, when, when Jesus needed protection, they said, we're seeking Jesus. He goes, I am he. Boom, everybody falls down, like, like passing out. Jesus doesn't need any protection. A couple of them went to the trial. That's where Peter said, I'm denying him with a curse. I don't know him. I don't know nothing from this Jesus. And one after another, they were alone and afraid and lost. You've ever been alone and afraid and lost? Like, like you, you're going in your own pathway in life? I want you to know that, that when you're stuck, when you're sinning, when you've walked away from the love of God, when you've separated yourself from the fellowship of his holy church, when you haven't received the Holy Supper in a long time, when you've been doing all that stuff, he's been calling you back. And he, wa he wants you to be one with him. And here's how. Did you know that in this high priestly prayer, he's praying specifically for you? Listen to these words. I'm not only praying for these disciples but also who will ever believe in me through their message. It's you and me. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I'm in you. May they be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. May they experience such perfect unity in the world so that the world may know you sent me and you love them as much as you love me. Now, Jesus could have prayed for, oh, Father, help it not hurt. Help me go fast. He did pray, if there's any other way, to, to, you know, let this cup pass from me. 
but not my will, thy will be done. He could have done all that, but what he did was he prayed for you. Because he loves you. And he wants you to be with him forever. And that's how James ends up his epistle. He says, if there's anybody who's lost, you go get them. And you pray for them. If their sins need to be forgiven, you pray for them. If they need to be anointed with oil, you anoint them with oil. If, if they're lost, help them be found. But really, make sure your focus is on the lost. And I dare say that, that a lot of times our prayers around here end up being prayers for my meal, my kids, that my church might keep its doors open or whatever that means, that sometimes we may do things the way I like them because after all, I gotta like it, right? Just sing my hymn, say my prayer. Don't talk about this, talk more about that. As, as if the word of God was something that you could just snip little pieces out of and you know, say, I'm, I really like that part when he talks about that. No, you gotta take the whole thing. And the whole thing means this. The whole thing means that out of everything we do, this stack of names of those people that we've said we believe are outside of the community of believers, praying for these people, seeking these people, seeking the lost is the most important thing we do. Maybe in your prayer life, you've gotten into the pattern that I did with my first guitar life which was, um, I learned E, A, and D, and I played them loud and proud. Maybe it's time to learn a G chord or a C chord. B minors are nice, F sharp minor, I love that one. And use the whole neck of the guitar, not just the bottom part that's easy. Maybe your prayer life needs to expand. And, and here's one way to do it. Start thinking about news items of this week. Start thinking about news items so, so that, that uh, you know, let's pray for all the people that are, whew, that are fighting those fires in, uh, down in Brazil in the Amazon and pray for those who are, are struggling along in life so that they feel like they have to light those fires and get some more land. Let's pray for, for wise stuff. Let's pray for peace in Chicago. You know, I don't know if we are the murder capital of the world, but I, we may be the shooting capital of the world, <laughs> right? And we pray for wisdom that people might not be so quick to pull out their Glock as they are to pull out their God. Maybe it's time we start praying for the poor and the lost and those, those who need a job and go one week without praying one prayer about our needs. Wouldn't that be, that, 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 that's hard to do. And every time you're praying for you, just stop and say, God, I'm sorry, I'm giving this week to somebody else. You take good enough care of me already, and you know all my needs. I trust, and I pray, and I seek the lost, because you've entrusted me with the power of prayer, and you're seeking the lost. Let's pray. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, Make me one with our sisters and brothers. One in our purpose. One in love. One in forgiveness. And our purpose is, it's real simple. 
that the world may know that you are the Savior of everyone and you love us. Help me pray for that in Jesus' precious name. Amen.